My name is Noemi, I'm from Spain. I study journalism and I always love to travel and meet people from different countries. My name is Kate Schoenbach. I'm a photojournalist from America, currently based in Montreal. I'm a photojournalist, I'm a writer, I'm a documentarian, and I love photographing and elevating people's stories. Uh, my name is uh, Adel Baghdadi. Uh, I'm originally Syrian, living in the Netherlands uh, for almost now a couple of years. Uh, I'm, I'm also the founder of uh, We Organization Netherlands, and where we create concept to promote social inclusion and fighting xenophobia. I've been a photographer for many years, and that led to short documentary filmmaking. And I think what got me into photographing refugees in particular was just an interest in elevating sort of the, the stories and the voice of the voiceless. I did a PhD in migration because I was curious about how the media and politicians influence what people think about migrants. What we think about migrants also because they tell us who has the right to come here and who doesn't have the right to come here to, like, to live and work. So I wanted to know how much, to what extent, media and politicians influence what we think about migrants and who is the right migrant and who shouldn't be here. I just wanted to shine a light um, on stories that aren't that well known. So there are certain topics in the media that are fairly well covered, or at least they were at the particular time. We all knew about the conflict in Syria, but having those humanizing moments where you're hearing what's actually happening within each individual family unit or within each ind individual person's, you know, sort of moment in time and understanding that personal connection really allows the audience to understand what refugees are going through and make it a personal connection. So it's not just about reading what's generally going on on the geopolitical, you know, sort of arena, but you're connecting on an individual level. And that's what's really important to me is to elevate those stories. And I think in all our countries, we have these dilemmas that somehow the politicians are having a strong agenda and also the media sometimes play a huge role on that. And I think we need to rethink what do we believe about that? Who has the right to travel? Who has the right to migrate? June, this is, I believe, June 2018, where there was a fight that broke out between different um, ethnic groups. And the fight got very violent. And there were people, different groups, throwing rocks at each other. And then I felt like I need to absolutely document this. The narrative that I believe the camp and, and the locals were trying to portray was that Moria really wasn't quite so bad. Um, in terms of fighting at the time, but I saw something very different with my own eyes and I thought it was very important to document this. I actually um, was chastised for this. Uh, there were some security that saw me taking photographs and I was escorted out. And uh, to make a long story short, um, I got a bit of a slap on the wrist and I thought these stories need to be shared. Whether or not it's the fighting that's going on here, you know, I met with so many different refugees from so many different places. I learned about things that no one else was really talking about. You know, coming from the West, I think we know about the Taliban, we know about ISIS and a few other different major, you know, militant and terrorist groups. But I was learning about different groups um, that people were fleeing from in the Middle East that hadn't been, that we didn't know about. So I just knew there were so many important stories there within Moria, um, you know, and I think my experience at the refugee camp, trying to be silenced, trying you know, for the authorities not to want my photos to get out, really just maybe want to share the stories for those who wanted their stories shared. So I've worked as a photojournalist for several years, documenting different cultures globally, documenting you know, cultures from you know, the Herero and the Nama in Namibia, uh, sort of different groups off the beaten path sort of cultures that people love to, love to read about and don't know that much about. So that really lent itself to me being interested in elevating the stories of those who, whose concept of home is a little bit less defined. And I think that's really what got me interested in elevating the stories of refugees. How I met Noemi was that we both do very similar sorts of work. So I'm a photojournalist. Noemi um, is a journalist, a professor. She does a lot of work in the space of refugee crises, community building workshops, and so forth. So we met through a mutual friend uh, a few years ago who thought, hey, I think I see synergies with, with your guys' work. Why don't you guys team up? And so she and I, for the last several years, have collaborated on a number of different um, talks at universities. Uh, this is our actual first exhibition together where we're sharing our work, um, the work that I did documenting the refugee crisis in Greece, 
as well as the legacy of the Herero and Nama genocide in Namibia, um, which still has a rippling effect for those people who uh, were refugees you know, over a century ago. Um, so my work in those two arenas and then Noemi's work um, across the world documenting refugee crises as well. So I know Noemi for a couple of years now already. We did a couple of collaborations as well. Like we work together from We Organization and Restarter as well. So like uh, we've been collaborating on different uh, projects. One of them was the, about raising awareness about the refugees in Gran Canaria. There were uh, uh, a lot of like uh, during the pandemic, also a lot of webinars that we organized together. So I've been working with Noemi for a couple of years and also speaking at the universities, like at Erasmus Universities of Nijmegen Universities about the topic migrants and refugees uh, for the students as well. The workshop are an idea to community building. We want to bring people together to actually think about these topics outside the box and sometimes trying to basically get connected in a personal level. We live in a very busy life, but sometimes we don't have quality time. So sometimes if you have some moment, a quiet moment, to also to get to know someone who is different than you, but then you learn what makes them feel at home, what, what makes them find home, you realize that they are very similar to you. For, for me, the whole workshop, like the whole exhibition, basically the whole idea of really like working with Noemi to set up this uh, exhibition as well, it came from really the the idea of finding home and what is the home and what do we even mean by the word that someone feels home somewhere. So this was the starting point. Doing the workshop today that we added the storytelling aspect to it because like as you see around like they say like each photo speak thousand words so we have a couple of thousands of words on the wall but we wanted to add a third or fourth dimension to that as well by sharing the stories and also inviting the people to share their own stories because we are the quite a diverse people with diverse backgrounds to show them that like we might look different from outside but how similar are we when it comes to the feeling homes and like also the different understanding about like what does home mean to me and what does home mean to you and how can maybe I will be misjudging doing what does home mean to me and trying to show it that to you in a my hospitality way, but then like it will be something different. It's not what you need to feel home here. So this is what was the discussion about. And then when the people left, I think a lot of people really been emotionally touched, but not only with the story itself, but it's also about that all these photos spoke up, really talked with them basically, and they got another dimension to the photos uh, as well. I remember a Syrian lady in the Beka Valley that told me, please tell their story, our story to other people so they don't forget about them. I would meet some Venezuelan refugees in Brazil that they were also looking forward that people would know what happened in their country because they are starving and they really have a very hard life. However, we don't know about that because the media don't talk about Venezuela in the context of Europe. So the idea that some people really think give visibility to our story, to our struggles, to war, to conflict, to starvation, and they want us to know because somehow uh, it feels like invisible in some countries, people feel very powerless. But some uh, people always uh, tell you that somehow tell my story so they don't forget about us. And one of the stories also from one of the Syrian ladies that really spoke to me she was really saying, I hope not to lose hope. So when I tell these stories and I see how difficult it is to fight against poli uh, politicians or policies that are really against migration, that we shouldn't lose hope because our biggest hope, so in the moment we lose hope, we stop looking for something. We stop looking for a better option. And there are better options than the ones we have right now. So yeah, I'm excited for people to come and see my work, to see Noemi's work, where we've documented, you know, the concept of finding home, past, present, and future. And I think what I want folks to take away from this is that the concept of home is very similar for, for all of us. You know, whether it's documenting refugee crisis or whether it's documenting, you know, different cultures around the world or speaking to friends and family or identifying for myself what home means to me, it's very similar for all of us. And so I want people to take away a sense of, awareness that despite people being refugees or people that have been persecuted, to see people as one, to see us all as people 
And we all have the same or very similar concepts of home, whether that means family, safety, a sense of security, um, a need for education and healthcare. These are all common themes that people have you know, identified as being what home means to them. And whether or not you're a refugee or a local, um, I think it's, it would be a beautiful exhibit to come and see and understand that we're all really the same. <laughs>